probably get another battery. What do we think? Hmm. I think we could probably do it. Let's, Let's look like on the edge. Jinx. <laughs> oh my gosh, Michelle, you know what? I just want to say that I'm so excited for today. I am too. And then, guys, it's because we have a special guest with us today. Hi. Say hi, guest. You can say hi anytime you want. Oh, hi. <laughs> Carrie. It's me. Okay. Hi. We Karen have... was just, hold on, I have to say that she was just testing the mic and she was saying, trusting me. Trusting me. And two, three. And we all laughed and cried a little bit. Because that's what her fellow church goers would say. Yeah. Were you not in, Michelle, were you not involved in the, you know, microphone stylings at, at work at school? I used to this? lead church song service and not once did anyone tell me this trusting. Maybe I guess you weren't trusting. They must have tested the mics before I got there. Yeah, they're like, just the talents here. Let's trusting make sure it's Michelle. Ready. Trusting me, Michelle. Faithful one, two, three. Faithful. All right. In him. In him. In him one. That's um, okay. Wait. Personal. Before we get to, I mean, yes. okay. First, yes. let me just say, yeah, we're excited because today we have a guest, and we haven't had a guest for like very long time. A really long time. Husbands, I think, were the last guests. Mm -hmm. And Carrie is here. She's a really good friend of ours. And we asked her literally like this week mm -hmm. if she would be willing to talk about her career, which is that of being a child birth doula. Mm -hmm. You have to say it like that. Child birth doula. Yeah. Or a slave to an owner. Yeah. Doula. We looked it up right before this. Just in case you were wondering, uh, it is a Greek word and it literally means. What did we Woman say? slave. That's right. Female. Female slave. Female, Female slave. slave. Yeah. And that's... We've come a long way. Sort of. <laughs> um, so no, we're very excited about it. And we posted on our Instagram this week to get some questions, which we got some good ones. And um, I think it's one of those things that it's just like, you've kind of, you've heard the word, but we want to peek behind the curtain. We want to know what yeah. it actually is like, what your day-to-day -day is, the ups, the downs. Yeah, for sure. But I really want to tell a but story. But before we get oh, to yes. that, Michelle has a story. Okay, I can't stop thinking about it. It happened yesterday. I left my house around 3 o'clock to go get the boys from school. And right down the little hill from my neighborhood is a cop car and a white atlas that he pulled over. And the mom is standing outside of the car. And I know there's a mom because I could see a car seat in the back. And there was a kid, maybe he was seven in the front seat and she's standing outside talking to the cop and I was just like, uh oh. Like it's never a good sign when you see someone outside of the car. No, I guess you're right. So then I went and got the boys. By the time I come back, 20 minutes later, there are now three cop cars. Uh oh. She is sitting on the sidewalk. Uh oh. I can still see her kid sitting in the front seat. There's a car seat in the back. I don't know if there's a kid in the car seat, but then they had her do a sobriety field test. You, you're watching this? Well, that part I didn't hear. No, I, I, wanted, I almost was like, should we take a walk, kids? Should we go totally. down the hill and see what's happening? No, but in our little neighborhood chat, someone said they saw her do the sobriety test. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man. Like, she probably went and got her kids or her kid from school. Like, what did she do that she had to get pulled over? Was she swerving? Did she blow through a stop? and then they pulled her over and smelled something yeah, so maybe. then by the time Werner came home maybe 30 minutes after that he said one of the cop cars was gone the mom was gone so they took her off in the cop car oh, no. and then the other two cops were still there and the cop was with the kids waiting for whoever to come pick them up that feels mm. necessary unnecessarily traumatic for those children yes. for the children yes. and for the mom too like I, was, I just keep putting myself in her shoes of, like, I don't want to leave my kids. I don't know that guy. I know right. he's a cop, but, like, I don't know him. Can we at least wait? Like, I'm fine. I will go with you. But can we at least wait till my husband or whoever comes to get the kids? Yeah, I agree. Those poor kids. I can't stop. I'm just, like, is she still in jail right now? Did she get bailed out? Was it alcohol? Was it drugs? Did you Google White Atlas? <laughs> the, first, right. the first three letters of her license plate are A N H. Let's look around and see if we can find her. Oh, I feel really bad for her. Uh, yeah. I do. Yeah. I mean. And like she's drinking at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, <sighs> she's got a kid and a, and a baby in a, in a car seat. Those are rough times. I mean, you know.
know, it's like, on the one hand, sure, that's dangerous. You're endangering your child to be driving drunk, obviously. But I don't know. It's like, if she's picking him up from that school right down the street, and it's like, she's probably thinking, well, I'm not, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. As we all Maybe have. she went to lunch with friends. Right. Right. She went to lunch. They had a few drinks. Mm -hmm. She drove home, picked them up on the way, and... Maybe she only ran the stoplight because her kid was, like, screaming and threw something yeah. into the front seat. Like, you just don't even know. It's so unique, every single situation, that, like, I hope they took that into account. But that feels very extreme, if you ask Very me. extreme. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how, you know, maybe she was, maybe she kidnapped them. Maybe they're not even her I kids. Know. Like, maybe she stole them. She stole the car, and the kids were in the car. Yeah. Mm, see? Mm. Now we're glad for yeah. it. <laughs> Anyway, mm -hmm. this, yeah, I mean, that's, this is why we don't so need, many scenarios. so <laughs> yeah, many scenarios, we don't need ring, thing, or so that, close to my house, house next door, <laughs> if Shay wasn't throwing up, I legit probably would have taken a walk with the kids, I'm shocked spot. that, I'm shocked that you didn't, but that makes sense, oh God, it's very, I heard like, a limp body down the hill, <laughs> I could have put in a stroller, we've got to know, <laughs> I've got to know, she's like, I wouldn't stop talking about it, and I was like, see kids, this is why, like, people really do go to jail, and so this is why we tell you, you got to make the right choices or you could get caught. Oh. I'm sure that lesson's going to You stick. made this a teaching moment mm -hmm. for your children. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> anyway, back to more important <laughs> things. Carrie, thank you, you for being that here. Story. Thank you for being here. Um, why don't you share a little bit mm. about yourself? Mm -hmm. um, well, this is not the first time I'm on the um, cast. It's not. So it's, I'm talking about something maybe more interesting well the first time you were here i find it endlessly interesting the first time carrie was here she was here with another guest she and our oh, friend abby right. yeah. and they were here because they <gasps> were homeschooled oh my gosh mm -hmm. i totally forgot do you feel like that. your homeschool beginnings have really led you to this <laughs> duo <laughs> do life yeah kind of. i'm like an onion there's so many layers to me i will i just want to keep peeling <laughs> Let's feel. Uh, I think yes, maybe in some ways. I think my mom was kind of hippie in a in a non hippie way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that made me yeah always hippie. And and some people say uh, so. I was a patent. So I'm Carrie. Hi, hi, hi Carrie. Hi, Thanks. welcome. Um, recently forty. Joined the Happy club. birthday, Yay. Carrie! I love being forty. Uh, so I think that. Uh, you know, the doula path was not an obvious one for me for a long time. And I was a patent and trademark paralegal for a really long time. Years. Yeah. Too long. Um, <laughs> Too and long. then during COVID, I tell people that it was a COVID passion project to become a doula, but it was, it kind of happened sooner, which I think my group of friends know that it started I mean, honestly, how long were you talking about potentially being a doula one day? Like, years. Yeah. Yeah. You, you would kind of put it out in the universe, like, yeah, maybe one day when the kids are older. Right. So you, yes, yeah, so you had a whole career before kids. Yes. Yeah. As a paralegal. And then, um, I know that childbirth probably played a role, mm -hmm. but was there a time before you had your kids that you had kind of played with the idea of being No, okay. I, not that I can remember. I think that I've always been Enneagram 2, mm -hmm. uh, the helper. The rare. <laughs> so rare. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I've always been like a helper, um, very passionate about, um, I worked with refugees for a while, so I felt like passionate about, um, you know, human rights, social justice, working with, um, you know, kind of margin marginalized communities. You're also a Pisces. I'm very much a Pisces. Mm -hmm. Which I just feel like the listeners need to Super know that, because strong. if you know a Pisces, yeah. you know a Pisces. You know yes. Pisces. Yes. Yep. Feels all the feels, so. like empathy. Such like an your mm -hmm. feelings are mm -hmm. my feelings yeah and I really think that contributes to your success as a doula which Absolutely. I think we get to but yeah yeah, yeah I, I you know I think it was my it's like success um as a paralegal too in some ways is that I cared so I care very deeply about things so when I care so much about something I get like all in, yeah. um, but how much can you really care about that? 
Thank you. Right. Uh, so I think you cared about the people you worked I with. I cared about them, Which yeah. kept, carried you in that job for years mm -hmm. longer than mm -hmm. maybe you would have. The relationships, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what finally made you break away? So I took a very, a kind of like hippie childbirth education class for my first. Um, and I think that you know, Vicky's uh, River is like two years older than Hudson, my oldest. And I think that that opened my eyes a lot too. You did hypnobirthing, all the things, right? Which even now I'm like... Attempted hypnobirthing. I attempted it, but I did take the class. Mm -hmm. And when I had River, the hospital I chose did have a volunteer doula program. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, that was my first contact with a doula or, you know, exposure to it. Was it yours, really, would you say? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It was, I, maybe it was kind of, like, just happening then. I don't know. 2012, I don't know if, the, if I'm right or wrong, but, like, it did feel like this wave of, like, let's all do it this way, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit. I don't mm -hmm. know. Anyway. Yeah. So, I think you had, you had one, too. I had Not one. the whole time. Um, she came in at some point. I don't really remember. It's all a blur. Yes. But um, I really remember loving her so yeah. much. And I couldn't even now tell you what she did, really. But mm -hmm. I just... Her presence. I loved her so much. Yeah. 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 So I think, uh, you know, your journey and my journey and was very similar in a lot of ways. Super long labor ended in a very emotional cesarean. And um, I remember Vicky coming back when you could go visit people in hospitals. I, I think you can now. Can you now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, coming to the hospital room and literally just crying with me. Vicky's crying, I'm crying, which is not a shocker. No, yeah, not, yeah. At all. not at all. It's crazy. Um, we were just crying. Because your intention also was to go unmedicated yeah. and yeah. That was what you wished for mm -hmm. for your mm -hmm. first birth. Yeah, same as Vicky. Yes, and yeah. then didn't yeah. happen. C section, open, like open shaking babies. and all of the trauma. All the things. Yeah, lots of trauma. So after that, I think I needed to do a lot of healing, and I liked me some therapy, so I did a lot of you know healing from that. And then I got really passionate about a VBAC and did a lot of research um, on that, and and probably should have honestly had a doula but my husband was like we i will be your doula. Uh, it's not how much is a doula <laughs> yes mm, i don't yeah. know what yeah. does she actually do yeah. hi my name's kevin i am also yeah. a doula yeah i never told you this he before does. but uh, no he calls himself the first doula in our hey, household that's yeah. good. <laughs> so when he asks questions while i'm out of birth he'll be like oh yeah that's pretty normal <laughs> oh, he's so funny he'll well, respond back really be like i was the first doula in our and how, and how many months apart are your two boys? So they are 22 months apart. Okay. So it was pretty soon after, surprise, when mm -hmm. I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, it, there were so many moments where I waffled back and forth. Like, I'm just going to do a repeat cesarean because you know what you're going to get. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's better when you've had a traumatic experience to just know okay i'm going to plan yeah. a very calm um peaceful i know what to like expect. the one thing you can control if you're me yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 i think right. a lot of women do it's like i, I would felt so out of control the first time yeah and i do not want to re repeat that so this is the one thing i can decide for myself and know that's going to happen yeah for sure and i remember vicky talking about how lovely calm was that experience right and yeah because because vicky's oh. second was born before your second obviously so you really yes. vicky was like the only friend that yeah. you had the like the way i did i mean mm -hmm. truly well i mean you know i i remember that obviously very clearly and yeah i still even to this day like i find so much solace mm -hmm. in that choice and mm -hmm. in that experience and like the healing from like the blur of the first one to like the present just yeah pre total presence and just calm and just like yeah i felt very for me the kind of person i am it was a very yeah. necessary choice absolutely so you carry like are seeing that like okay i could have that you know quote unquote peaceful experience for myself and choose that mm -hmm. but there was something pulling you also in or yeah I think 
had I, you know, it's so scary to think about had I tried so hard for the VBAC and then had the repeat cesarean, like how oh, fucked up would that totally. be? Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, it, you know, not to be like super hippy dippy about it, but I feel like the universe knew. You needed that. I needed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it, it worked. Like, but I listen to a lot of VBAC meditation, which I think is really good yes. because I think that it becomes a total mind fuck. Like most second and third multiple children are because yeah. you're thinking about other things in your mm -hmm. life. Yep. The second time moms have toddlers to think about and, and, and then your body is not, cannot focus on going into labor. Mm -hmm. Um, but the VBAC offers another layer of what if my uterus ruptures, mm -hmm. you know, all those like. Very things. The fear-based things we hear. Fear-based, like still very low chance, very low risk, yeah. um, but they can still happen. Um, and so I had to do a lot of meditation and soul searching and be okay with, you have to kind of get to this point where you're okay with having a repeat cesarean. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, knowing options. that's a possibility. So besides the meditations, was there anything different that you did to prepare for a potential VBAC? No. It was just yeah. like, I'm just going to see what happens and see if my body does it. Yeah. I wonder if, like, there's part of it that your body already knows what to do in a sense mm -hmm. that, like, mm -hmm. you almost are more relaxed that second time. I mean, I can't imagine that you wouldn't be. Even having yeah. gone through the trauma of something that we, like, we went through, which all three of us, I mean, I don't know that yours yeah. was, like, as traumatic for you, but maybe. Really it wasn't traumatic, no, but no. it did end in the You kind of knew that could, that could happen. Yeah. yeah, All three of us went in with the intention of having the babies out of our vagina, and that mm -hmm. did not happen. That's right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, but your body and your mind, too, like, you're kind of like, well, I've done this before. You know, maybe that does kind of lend itself to more successful. Behavior. And also having the mindset of, like, but, you know, whatever the outcome yeah, I, I have to be okay with that because I know I've had a C-section before. Whereas yeah. your first time around, we have not, we, we're naive to think just like, well, this is my birth plan. So Well, and everyone goes in like, I don't want a cesarean. I don't want one. Mm -hmm. And, and at, at the end of the day, like they sometimes save women and children yes. <laughs> a lot of times. Right. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they are medically necessary. And, and then you go in with the knowledge of it's not this scary. I mean, it's still scary, but mm -hmm. I've done it before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what it looks like. Exactly. So if it happens again, I will have time to mentally prepare. Yeah. And I think that's the hardest thing for even me as a doula, seeing people who are really don't want a cesarean, really don't. And then sometimes that is medically necessary mm -hmm. and it needs to happen, but how can you kind of process through that trauma I think that that's why I wish I had a doula there with me before, right? Because you can process through the, it's not an emergency situation now. So what questions do you have? Mm -hmm. How can we um, mitigate some trauma mm -hmm. ahead of time or even after by talking about it when it's fresh? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that talking to Vicki about it and crying with her within 24 hours mm -hmm. really helped. Really therapeutic. Yeah. yeah. So, and did you do your VBAC unmedicated? I did. <gasps> yeah. I didn't remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah, mine was definitely fully medicated. <laughs> yeah. Full meds. Yeah. Um, and how long was your labor when, like, feeling everything? So I had um, a membrane sweep. So I went over my due date with um, my second, <coughs> which is not uncommon, but uh, also, again, messes with your head because you're like, oh everyone says your second is going to come early mm -hmm. and like yeah. 38 weeks yeah so he was two three days past due but on my second day after my due date I got a membrane sweep which um just basically tri triggers oxytocin and and kind of just tells your body hey it's time to get ready to go <laughs> even uh, though the act of it feels no happiness there's no, no there is no, no oxytocin no. process over no they should include an orgasm with that. I just I know. Well, here's nice. your oxytocin. You have to include your own orgasm. You can so, do that. Yeah. So, yeah, there's also, also lots of sex happening. Maybe not orgasms, but friction. Like, yeah. <laughs> does the ejaculate, it's, does the sperm help? It's supposed to help. I've yeah. heard that, that it helps surface. soften. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did lots of that. Uh, so that was the day before I went into labor. And that night I was very crampy and... Um, probably woke up the next day at like 
So we're here 4 a.m. Hmm, okay, things are, this is starting to pick up a little more. But I still think you're so distracted with your toddler mm -hmm. thinking about it that you're kind of like second time you're kind of in denial uh so i my in-laws were in town and i they had come a few days before my due date so they everyone was just kind of sitting around waiting <laughs> um but i think it was probably like 5 30 or 6 a.m i woke up and it was real contract contractions were really happening and so i told Ke i told kevin okay can you go wake up your parents and tell them you know, I wanted to labor at home as long as possible, of course, too. So I was like, I want them to take the kid, like my son out of the house. I want to be able to have this Zen space. So let's give them a little time to wake up. So yeah. it's probably 6 a.m., let's say. So he goes down and tells them and they are, God bless them, not the quickest movers. <laughs> <laughs> These were Sally's. <laughs> um, so they're like taking their sweet time and I'm like, should we make breakfast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should we take showers and blow nope. her hair? Absolutely not. And I'm just thinking like, just get, get out. out. Take him out of the house. Wear your please. pajamas. Go. Yeah. You're like, I'm about to get animalistic over here. I need you out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, and then I get to this point where he wakes up maybe. And so I remember I'm in labor, but I grab, take him out of his bed. He's not even two years old. And I'm walking down the stairs with him and also thinking, this is the last time. Oh, no. You're going to yeah. be the only one. The only oh, one. Don't even get me started. Yeah, I know. It gets me emotional. So I walk downstairs with him and I basically, like, I look at my mother in law and I'm like, can you please take him out? <laughs> I can't <laughs> help her. I go back upstairs and then. You know, I'm just having contractions, throwing up. I don't know what's happening. Oh, I don't man. actually think that throwing they ever up. ended up. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, which is yeah. good. Is that normal ways. in yeah. a lot of hmm. labors? I don't know. Every labor when, like, the nurse and I always say, like, can you throw him out? Oh, my God. That's good. more, like, common for transition. Oh. Time, yeah. Hmm. Um, their hormones are just going, yeah. going crazy. So it's good. And you're clearing, your body is trying to clear out. That's why people poop during the oh. year, too. Yeah. See, your body's just no. clean. Your yeah, bodies are just like, too. let me handle this. Yeah, and everyone's so paranoid. <laughs> Some people hate throwing up. Some people hate pooping. And me and the nurses are always like, yes, just get it, get it, oh, get that done. poop out. Who cares? I, didn't, yeah, I don't even know how people are so aware of what they're doing. Yeah. Like, I don't remember a thing about it. Yeah. So anyway, we took... Uh, it, I'm throwing up and I'm like, I should probably go to the hospital. I just don't want to be in the car, which is everyone's mm -hmm. thing. No one wants to be in the car when they're going through this. So yeah. we probably left at like 7, 7.30. So it was pretty fast. I yeah, mean, yeah, moving fast. quickly. And I am surprised because I thought, oh, I'm just going to stay in my cocoon of my home and labor all day. And so we're, of course, it's 7, I think it's like 7.30 traffic peak oh, traffic no. time oh right and the shift change for hospitals is 7 or 7 30. so you know san diego in general is pretty trafficy, but mm -hmm. when you're getting around the hospitals between 7 and 8 oh, it's no. just so trafficy. <laughs> so we get to the hospital and i tell kevin like i want you to park because you can go up to the front but i'm like i really just want you to park like i'm buying yeah. myself more time like i'm trying to be strong he's like are you sure so he goes down to like the lowest level of the it's underground parking so we're walking up the stairs and I'm like having contractions every like three minutes. Oh, wow. I'm stopping and I remember people stopping and like asking. I rem so vividly remember people looking at him like, is she okay? Oh my God. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. And thinking back, I'm like, how do people ask that? I'm in labor. Of course I'm okay. Yeah. Like it's normal. Were you making the animal sounds in the stairwell? Uh, I don't think it was animal like, sounds, Whoa. but I, uh, maybe. I think I was breathing just through them. Yeah. But obviously yeah. people know. Like, yeah, I mean, you're at a just, hospital. Maybe they just want to feel like they're helping, maybe. That's true. Yeah. Like, do I need to get a wheelchair? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. Which they did offer me, too. And I was like, no. What? I'm going to So walk. what was, like, the mental space there for you of, I want to buy myself time. I don't want a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. What was it? To just better your chances of naturally getting there? Yeah. Okay. And I think putting off getting an epidural. Mm -hmm. Um, even though I 100% asked for an epidural. I you mean, did? Yeah, when we when we got there, I was only, only, I think I was like five centimeters. Did you go into it though thinking, I don't want an epidural? Yeah. And, and I was so day really of, you're like, hardcore. actually give me an epidural. Dula Kev was very prepped. Yeah. <gasps> Say yeah. no. I had a safe word and everything. Mm. 
So you actually Which said the word. Honey Badger. Honey, honey Badger. Yeah. Yeah. But you actually verbally told the doctors or nurses, I would like an epidural. I think I told Kevin. She's like, Honey Badger. Honey I Badger. Don't think I, never honey. Said I don't think I said this. So, so you were just so testing, you were testing the water. I was I like testing, uh, <laughs> testing the doula. Yeah. How strong are you? Yeah. Give me the epidural. I don't think I said epidural. <laughs> you really and he's just like, no. you got this. Yeah. Yeah, what did he say? No. Uh, he was like, I don't think you want it. I don't actually think you do. Mm. And I was like, no, I do. So give it to me now. Uh, and give it said, to me. I don't think you do. Let's try other things. And the nurse, to, to be fair, I think it's hard for partners um, to do that because you, they don't want it held against them mm, later. later in life. Um, but the nurse... To her great credit, her name is Erin. She, I follow her on Instagram now. I stalked her. Yeah, she was <laughs> she was very influential in, in my <clears throat> Well, I mean, and just to say, like, the nurses... Are amazing. Mm -hmm. They are the thing. They yes. carry you through yeah. that birth. Yeah. And so, I, to, sometimes now, as a doula, some nurses are a little like, oh, you want an epidural? Okay, I'll put an order in right now. Mm. Do, do, do. Mm. Um, but... That would be she, Vicky. Nurse Vicky. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're feeling something? <laughs> okay. Let me get that. Does it hurt a little? Yeah. I Let's got just a thing for you, yeah. honey. They're like on a scale of um, zero to ten, and some moms are like seven. She's like, oh, we don't want you to be a seven. But I'm thinking <laughs> childbirth is a ten. We don't want you to feel any of this. Yeah. Um, she was amazing. She got up in my face oh, and held my face. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. And she said, I know you can do this. Oh. I believe in you. I'm right here with you. Like she was amazing. So I think yeah. she carried me through. Yeah. And then I had just heard about this thing uh, called sterile water injections. You guys heard no. that? No. And it's um they don't really do it anymore. Um, which whatever. Uh, it's like a little um pokes. I mean, it's a syringe of sterile water that they put in your back for back pain for labor and it's like tiny bee it feels like tiny bee stings all over your back oh. so i don't know how many they did so i had just heard a podcast about it before like a week before my due date i was like i want sterile water injections if i can't have an epidural and they're like okay and they, they like totally knew what to do that was yeah. something they could do oh wow yeah. Yeah. why aren't you offering this so midwives what's midwives it for more do it uh so it tricks your brain into like giving pain somewhere else oh, oh it's like that. my grandfather oh. yeah he's like if you're like oh my knee really i hurt my leg and he's like let me pinches oh. your arm and he's like see you're like gonna hurt me let me guess is that your dad's dad my mom's dad oh <laughs> i never met my dad's dad he died when my dad was 12. oh gosh that explains a lot <laughs> well my mom's dad was very scary for the record yikes but funny well Scary. It's scary in like a strict from the 50s kind of way where like <laughs> he's funny but like low-key funny anyway the, this is not yeah people, anyway yeah. anyway yeah like a just a, a pain distraction so yeah. i did i did that i don't know that it super helped i mean it did because i didn't get the epidural um and i remember to i probably was like in transition and I only wanted to labor with the midwife. So at the specific hospital I was at, you couldn't see midwives prenatally. Oh. So there are a couple of hospitals here in San Diego that you can see midwives prenatally and through your labor. Um, but at my hospital, you could not. You could only see an OB, but there were midwives on 24-7. I mean, there's still midwives 24-7 at this hospital. Um, so they would just pop in on your labor day. Yeah. And you've never met them before. I've never met them, but they have the more holistic approach. Yeah. Um, and so I had specifically said, I, my OB was not on call. Um, I, I think he went on vacation. I knew he wasn't going to be You're there. Like, and I but scheduled that's why, it that way. But listen, that's why a doula is even more important mm -hmm. because, Doctors I mean, I haven't even said the difference, but like a doula stays there. The biggest difference is that a midwife can actually like catch a baby. Yes. Whereas check your cervix. Check your cervix. Do those medical things. Yeah. But a doula is purely like support. Yeah. And the fact that they can be there all through your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. That constant. Presence. And you before. Need that. Before and after, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a relationship that emotional support you need. Yeah. Yeah. So the so an OB 
an on-call OB kept coming in the room. Just to check on me because I have high risk. I wanted to be back. So, mm. you know, I really have to check on me. Um, and I would yell at her, like, get out of the room. You would say that? Yeah. <laughs> and Kevin was like, wow, I mean, this is like the evolution of, right? You are educated, you're more empowered. Um, and she left eventually. So <laughs> then I, I, you know, labored with the midwife and who caught my son. Um, and I love her and it was really cool too because um, so his heart rate was dropping anyway he had a, a nuchal cord his the cord wrapped around his neck so that sucked so it was a little bit of panic mm. um, moment so I don't love that of course there's always something in every labor mm -hmm. that goes awry so I think that that was that was my thing right he had a heart rate thing and then it was scary and then they were like we have to get him out right now so of course I would have loved it to be like less intense and yeah. and I've been to a lot of births where that is pretty normal and midwives are like, oh, it's probably a cord, but they were at a hospital. I was high risk feedback, you know, they don't just didn't want to take it. It was more intense. It was more intense. Um, so anyway, I pushed him out, but he was born at like 11.45 p.m. PM. Uh, no, no, no. AM. AM. Yeah, oh, sorry. That's quick. <gasps> yeah. So wow. All that to come back to that your is story. Very so fast. Like six hours. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I think that I had kind of started in the middle of the night. And didn't know. And didn't really know. That's fantastic. Know. Yeah. So it was super fast. And I think I tell people a lot. Not all VBACs are that way. I think mine was a little special because I pushed with mm -hmm. my first. Like they could see his head, mm -hmm. that whole thing. So I had done all of that work yeah. and really paved the way. You knew what it felt opening. like to do that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was a little more easy. Yeah. Stretched out. When I, so <laughs> when I was pregnant with West, my second, I had it in my head of, it would be nice to experience a VBAC and know what it's like to burr the baby out yeah. of my vagina. Yeah. And, and you had Carrie and as Carrie, an example. Yeah, you were the one person that was like cheerleader from the get-go, was like, you got this, mm -hmm. you could do it, giving me tips of like how to push and like all the positive mantras. Mm -hmm. I really feel like you were my like doula before you became a doula. I Yes. I mean, I, trial. I actually count you as a... Birth. I love that. Yeah. People are like, how many births have you done? Like, you're on yeah, I mean, so for real. Number one. Like, I mean, you weren't right next to me when the baby actually came out, but yeah. that was also very quick. I only pushed with West, I think, 40 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Out he came. But you came to the hospital, right? Yeah. I think right yeah. after, like, pretty quickly after. I know. Okay, so you have this wonderfully successful VBAC experience yes and you had a you loved your midwife <gasps> yeah she was awesome so and my nurse yeah then your nurse yeah. that i will not and i wrote Aaron, her i will not her in you. i wrote her a thank you card oh, thank, you, thank you for grabbing my face and yeah. snapping me back to reality she's not a nurse anymore actually what does she she's, do now well i don't know for sure i think she, i mean she's still a nurse but she's not an lmd nurse oh, oh. so you know it's an exhausting taxing I bet. So I well, and I kind of want to get into yeah, that. Like yeah, like we want to hear the two. Yeah. yeah. Do okay, life. so you okay. have you have your yeah. second, and then yeah. how long between his birth and then, I guess, well, he, he was born what year? 2017. So like three years until you really like decided, I'm going to do it. I'm hopping in. I'm going to like get certified. West, West's birth was 2018. So okay, so really. two years. <laughs> oh, oh, one year. I see what you mean. And it's a slow burn. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, what was like the hurdle, like the mental hurdle? I mean, I know it's scary, mm -hmm. obviously, to like change careers and to kind of like take a leap and do something new. But like, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about like that struggle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I am a firstborn and I married a firstborn. Mm -hmm. So we're very responsible people. Mm -hmm. Rule followers. We're rule followers, we're responsible. And I had um, got out of college and I paid off all my student loans. Like, fast as I could so I was always like I'm just gonna make a ton of money I'm never gonna ask my parents for anything you know I just wanted to be super independent and so I think then marrying someone who's also very responsible and very fiscally conservative yes mm -hmm. <laughs> it was hard to um, make a decision for myself mm -hmm. um, that felt maybe irresponsible that felt 
irresponsible mm -hmm. and um, reckless. Reckless, mm -hmm. yeah. Some ways. Mm -hmm. um, not a sure thing, like a, not a nine to five paycheck yeah. with benefits. Yeah, which, you know, I think even in a camp where you were able to, like Kevin's finances and your savings, all of that yeah. allowed you financially to comfortably do it, but you still had the mental hurdles of like, yeah, wait, I'm supposed to just walk away from my paycheck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think to letting, like I didn't want to let him down and I wanted to, I, I find myself, like a, you know, kind of a feminist. I want to be an equal um, contributing, whatever that looks like, even though of course, like stay at home moms, you know, this whole, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. it's, you know. it's confusing and complicated. Yeah, It is. Mm -hmm. So, um, and finding my value in, um, mm -hmm. in, you know, taking care of women and, and, and also what comes with, not just like in my marriage and my family, in my small family, but e externally, right? I mean, he's from a small town in upstate New York. So then we go back to talk, you know, family reunions and stuff and people are like what's a doula or oh that must be a california thing huh? oh shit <laughs> really oh, like, truly truly uh a second cousin it's like that is that a california thing oh, God. caring about babies oh. caring about mothers <laughs> no it's good. yeah that sounds liberal yeah well, so it's a woman thing <laughs> yeah so i think finding that uh space and it wasn't easy it's still not easy in some ways but i think the to own it year. or what's not easy? Uh, I think it wasn't easy to be okay with doing something for me that I was passionate about um, and the unpredictability of it for a very predictable um, partner who is right. like, I what? When are you coming home? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and now he's super, he's like, really supportive and amazing mm -hmm. but it it took some time yeah it was definitely a journey to was part of that time deciding that you were going to like commit to it and, and because it's like a certification process right like you have yeah. to enroll in yeah. a program so you kept your day job while yeah. you're doing these yeah so i did a like a one week training mm -hmm. and then you have to attend um three births that have to be like a certain amount of time two are vaginal one can be a cesarean then you have to keep extensive notes on those births so i did like volunteer births so there's a program um in san diego called operation doula which is for military community and it's volunteer doulas who are certified or finishing their certification program um that kind of get called last minute to births so that was nice that i could be called in um, you can kind of pick and choose mm -hmm. or like put yourself on a calendar of like, okay, I'm available this weekend to help. Um, so that's how I got my certification births. I did a couple, I think I did four through them, um, but three of them ended up working out. And you like turn in your notes and to you someone. turn in your paperwork. You have to write a really long essay. Like it's a pretty intensive process, yeah. I would say, which is good, I think. Um, and I am the type of person that, you know, as, as a rule follower, I want to be certified. Yeah. I want to have that certification, but not everyone needs that to be a doula. Mm -hmm. Um, and some people, I, I think <clears throat> you can like Michelle, you can be a supportive, you know, empathetic person in a room and you don't have to be certified mm -hmm. right, to be that support person. But do you feel like you can actually like getting those certifications probably is also a mental thing of like. Okay, I really am a doula. I can yeah. charge what I want to charge for this. Yeah, I think the that's where the money comes in, right? Like, okay. I think for me, it would be hard to charge and saying like, I'm just really, I, but I'm good at it. I'm just yeah, really it's passionate it's about babies. I'm passionate. Women. Yeah. Yeah. How did that, like, what was that? Like, because, because okay, so you're there and you're the, in these volunteers. So no one's getting paid in these volunteer yeah, situations. Yeah, no one's getting paid. So how do you go? You can't sustain that. For, no. no. And how do you decide what to charge? And are there different levels depending on the well, doula? And there is and, so much value in what you're doing that, like, it, we it needs to shift all of our brains, probably even in the doula's brains where they're maybe undervaluing mm -hmm. their, yeah. their um, you know, whatever, a, a purpose, soul, whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the word. But, you know, what they're providing. And then what the world, like, like, you know, your husband at first was like the, for the birth, like, we don't need to pay for this. This is, mm -hmm. you know, part of it, which I think is a common reaction. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's not weird. Um, 
to switch it and be like, well, of course, that's part of that's part of the birthing process. Like we need mm-hmm. to make sure we have enough for the doula. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so how do you go from like volunteering mm-hmm. and then like, okay, now I'm gonna this is gonna be my job. Yeah. Well, I think you do like thirty hour births, and you're like, I can't, no. I can't physically. <laughs> yeah. Do, like, do this. That's time away from your family. And yeah. Kids. Yeah. I think I started realizing it is you're. It's such a um. It's such an emotional experience, very sacred to be in someone else's space. Um, and it's an exchange of energy too, mm-hmm. right? I'm giving a lot of energy, more than I am behind a computer screen, mm-hmm. like filing patents, right? <laughs> like, I hope so. I am. Yes, <laughs> I am. I love you patents. <laughs> May this work. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, now I need to go get a massage. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you're giving so much of like I'm giving so much of my time, my energy, the time away from my family, my emotional like cup. Yeah. Um, yeah, physical too, because aren't physical? you like doing like yes. physical things yeah. also? Yeah. Definitely. Especially the unmedicated ones where I'm with them for 20 hours <sighs> and I'm doing hip squeezes and yeah. I'm like hunched over them, you know, doing all the things. Uh so I did come to a point where, you know, and and having other doula mentors too of encouraging like you need to value your time. Um that's kind of how it started. Yeah. And and then I would, you know, I started small at like $800, mm-hmm. you know. And then I slowly kind of went up and each really long hard birth, I would be like, "Okay, I'm adding another $100." You're all, sorry, this does not people. feel commensurate with my effort. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, you know, when your hourly rate ends up being like $15 an hour. Oh, gosh. Um, sure. mm-hmm. no. You just kind of have to change it. So that's kind of how it. Yeah. What is it range? Like, what's like the range right now that you are seeing in the doula community of like how yeah. much it would cost? I would say 1000 is probably the lower end mm-hmm. now to 2500 Okay. And, and that encompasses the entire relationship you have. Yeah. From start to end. Yeah. How early on in the process do people usually find a doula, do you think? I would say the average is probably 20 weeks. I think, too, that's when people start telling their family and they're feeling like, okay, this is going to stick. However, I've had quite a few people who, like, I, like pee on a stick and they send me a message. And they're ready. <laughs> those are the type yeah. A eldest children responsible yes. ones. <laughs> yes. And those are the type of clients that I tend to get too, I think. Um, maybe because I am like, I am a little more type A, like very responsive. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not like the typical like hippy dippy. Yeah. How, um, how do they find you? Is there like a database for local? Yeah. Oh. There's a, a database called Doula Match. Oh. Kind of like eHarmony. <laughs> <laughs> It has my photo, my bio. My photos there. Um, yeah, so you can search by your due date and the zip code. I mean, I think that it's nationwide. Doulamatch.com. Okay, nice. I'm just saying, I don't know. I should know this. Um, I have a website, too. I think people probably just search doulas in San Diego. What's your website? Doulacarry.com. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and how many births have you done? I think I'm at 36. Wow. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like a lot. I mean, I feel like my doula mentor has done like 250, right? She's, I mean, she How has, long has she been doing it? Um, probably four or five years. Oh, yeah. okay. So not really that long. Not that, yeah. I think, but she also takes like five clients a month. Yeah. Like, How does she even balance it? Um, she has older kids. Yeah. 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 And, um, what, what is like, um, the process of so you, they find you mm-hmm. are you being interviewed do you guys meet once mm-hmm. and then they're like yeah or like how does that usually work do you just call them yeah so I usually people message me on my website mm-hmm. and do it carry do it <laughs> I like that wasn't taken I know. <laughs> seems like a simple easy to remember website. I know Got lucky. Uh, So I usually ask people if they can either do a phone call or a Zoom and you kind of just chat and get to know them. And honest, I'll be honest, I probably um, don't take like 25% of the people that maybe want to hire me. Really? I'm super picky now. Yeah. Good good for you. What are some, um, like, what are some decision making things? Um, Some people don't want to take 
birth class. So mm. they they don't want to maybe take birth class birth classes, which isn't super required. But I feel like the um, I tell people a lot, like doulas are not magic. I'm not going to change the course of your birth. So I feel really passionate that if they're coming to me and they want this you know, they want a birth to happen their certain way. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not really going to change the course of it. I can offer you guys guidance. I'm not going to be combative with um, the doctors or nurses because that's not my place. Do they mm -hmm. think, like, that's your role, like, to, like, kind of stand up advocate, for that? Advocate, maybe, yeah. yeah, which I think is important. Like, I think advocating for people is important, but I think being a self-advocate is the most important thing. And you're there to emotionally support them to advocate for themselves yeah, as well. Like yeah. you'll advocate with them. Yes. Or like, hey, have you thought about asking this question? Mm. Or how are you feeling once that information that they told you, how are you feeling about that? Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. What else can come up for you? Which I really love that because I think, you know, it's just nice to know you have a say, like as the mom, as the woman, yeah. and for you to spark these questions in them. And you genuinely want to know, like, you let me know, rather than you saying, this is what I think you should do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the beast in the room, and I'm going to tell them what you should do. Like, right. I just don't think that would feel as good. Maybe people think they want that. I, yes, I think they do. And also, people don't want ownership of things, right? They want someone to blame. Mm. And so that's been a hard journey honestly for me too is because I felt like I had some some blame too and it's so hard as an empath yeah. to um like there's still things that are hard for me and I'm like but I did the best that I could mm -hmm. um within the scope of my work mm -hmm. um and so I can sense kind of coming back to that I can sense those people I can sense that in a zoom ah. call and I can say, mm, there are so many great doulas in San Diego. There is the right doula out there for you. So you'll I tell them. It's me. You'll tell them that. Yeah. And sometimes I'll say things like my schedule is looking full or, mm -hmm. um, but there are other times too where I will just say, um, I, I just don't think that I'm the right doula for you. I'm not sure I can offer you what you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? Because I make it about me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, and it, so they can't really take like take it that personally. That's yeah. good you know, though. You're making, you're drawing boundaries for yes. what That's you know. So important. Yes, that you can provide, and also what you need to get out of it too. Right. I love that so much. Like I you know, I was thinking about um, trying to find like a hairdresser for my kids. I don't want them to go just like super cuts, you know. Yeah. And I always ask people like. Can you do this? Are you willing to work on, you know, they're they're not babies, but they're still like they're like young. They're mm -hmm. nine and eleven and but they're you know, they'll sit still and I feel like they feel this pressure to say, Yeah, sure, sure, bring them in when I can almost feel that they don't really want to be doing it. Mm -hmm. And I just wish they would say like I literally say, like, if you don't do kids, it's totally fine. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. And so even like we have to go through these like multiple appointment scenarios where I end up having to like switch and find someone new anyway. Yeah. Where I would mm -hmm. I would love mm -hmm. it if someone was like you know, it's just not really my thing. And, you right. know, which, you know, I think when it comes to a job, we're just trained to follow the dollar. So it's like, yeah. I mm -hmm. would love if Werner can get to a place to turn down certain clients, sure. you know, and to say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to put you in touch with these other realtors. Yeah. So I really think they're going to be a better match for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas now he's kind of has the mentality of like, well, I mean, I have to like put food on the table. So yeah. Hey, but also like keep my mouth shut. But also you. taking on that client doesn't free him up for taking on maybe someone that would be more Even better for him, right? right? Yeah, I feel like it's this it's this hard balance mm -hmm. because I feel like there's kind of this abundant you have to have this abundance mindset totally. where it's like, okay, if I don't take this client for April, I only have one April client, but maybe the perfect person will come to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. love that. It's a good idea. So what has been the, like, happiest feel-good experience or client you've had, maybe, or just mm -hmm. what was so special that it that will stick out in your mind forever? Um, I Well, I think it's easy to say the happy feel-good ones are the unmedicated, mm -hmm. like, beautiful water births. Um, and, and yes, like, those are super beautiful 
beautiful and easy and like they got the birth that they wanted. Um, but I think there's also something to be said for the women who start out very fearful. And so I have them take, do an intake form of like, Hey, what, you know, why do you want to do a, what are things you've heard about birth? And so there's, um, a lot of, you know, some people will just answer really quickly and others will write me like essays, which I love because yeah. I freaking love because as like budding therapist, yeah. like, tell me everything. <laughs> and then for them to see that transformation to, for me to see the transformation in them as they get more educated, as it gets closer. And then honestly, frankly, everyone hasn't, not everyone, but the majority of women have um, medicated hospital births. Mm -hmm. So it's only fair to, um, to embrace them. Mm -hmm. And I think that I love the ones who go through that journey and come out the other side, even though they were super fearful and come out the other yeah. side and go, wow, yeah. I did that and it's really powerful. Yeah. That's gotta happen a lot. Like that's yeah. gotta be like a really rewarding yeah, part of so the job. Like, how do I? Yeah. Just... I know. So you 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 don't have to get a doula only when you want an unmedicated birth. No, it's truly just a support person through my pregnancy, whatever that pregnancy looks like, whatever mm -hmm. that birth looks like. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's a C, what if it's a planned C section? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've had a couple of breach um, babies or. Um, a VBAC who a couple of people who have gone to exactly 42 weeks mm -hmm. and there's always some weird reason like babies are smart and mm -hmm. there's a reason that they don't come mm -hmm. right so sometimes babies don't descend or they don't turn from the breech position um, and I think that just having that person to walk through even grieving that right if if it's a breach you know earlier on um, I had a breech mom who tried an ECV, which is where they Ooh. try to turn the baby. Yeah. And that didn't work. But even, you know, me being available for her during that, like emotional preparing her before and then after. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did more. Um, I went to see them in the hospital after she had her cesarean, which I think is good to help them process through. Mm -hmm. And then I did an extra, I think I did an extra two like postpartum visits to kind okay. of help her recover after the cesarean. So yeah, I don't think it's always necessary. I wish that I could be in more cesareans because I have only been able to sneak into one when oh. the mom was like hysterically crying, like, I need her there. Aww. And so they I, let you in the OR. They let me in the OR, Whoa. which was super cool. Did you get to watch like the actual? So I didn't really, I don't know that I wanted to, mm -hmm. but I Maybe was. Maybe one day, you know, just peek, up, peek over the curtain. Curious, yeah. yeah. Um, I, so there's that moment where the baby comes out and the dad can go over and see the baby, but then the mom is left kind of stranded. Yeah, You're I like know. literally stuck on the table, yeah. sheet in like, front of you. Are they okay? I <laughs> yeah. can't believe it my head. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and so I got to be that, like, she was very panicky. Oh, and yeah. I got to just be there yeah. saying, like, talking her through it. Like, your husband's over there with the baby. Oh, I do you hear the baby crying. Oh. Like, I hear her crying. <clears throat> it's all right. She's yeah. great. She's healthy. Yeah. Um, how's it going over there? Yeah. So like, that's such a cool, I wish that that that's the next level of do a hood. Like, do a hood. That would be great. Be more Agree. The that door. feeling is not fun of being pulled and tugged on that table and like hoping that the baby's okay. And, and it's a long process. It's, it's like so 45 long. minutes. It's so long. I fell asleep in the second one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was calm. And then yeah, after, the first one, I not fall like, yeah. I don't know how common this is, but all of the drugs coursing through you after Shaking. and like um, freezing like you can't yeah. hold the baby for a solid i mean i think it was definitely an hour with shay i was just like, well, and and it's like where's the there baby? getting so back up while they're gone mm -hmm. yeah. going the in and out of they're all gone consciousness yeah, and just, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. are yeah. you there so were you the there anesthesiologist her? is just there like playing on his phone dude i know i can literally see him yeah. in the back yeah. corner right now like yeah. if i think about no, it they're not playing on their we're kidding. They're totally <laughs> professional. They're very focused. Mm -hmm. um, but were you able to just stay with her while the dad and the yeah. baby left? That's really nice. Yeah. yeah that's special. The time. Mm -hmm. And then go into post-op with her. Mm -hmm. Like, I yeah. mean, she, and then she got to have the baby more skin to skin, but just encouraged too. All you need, all the baby needs right now is just being on your skin. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can try breastfeeding, but just having that Time together. Yeah, yeah, that like voice of reason and yeah, like um, calm. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Reassurance. Yeah. Um, it is, given that it is such an emotionally taxing thing that you do. Mm. And um, that you're an empath, deep feeler. <laughs> yeah, like, so it's almost awesome. interesting because clearly, like, you're drawn to these kinds of, like, there's something that draws you to this. Yeah. But, is I mean, it's got to be hard, though, right? Yeah. It's extremely hard. I mean, there's definitely been times where you've texted, you know, after a birth of just, like, that was really emotionally taxing, mm -hmm. or you feel guilty, or you feel bad for the mom that it didn't go the way she wanted. Yeah. So how do you process those emotions and mm -hmm. yeah, not well, carry like, that through? Yeah, and, like, mm -hmm. giving yourself, like, enough time and to... Grace to recover yeah mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of things that happen too because not only is it emotionally taxing but physically taxing and so when you are going pulling an all-nighter or two nights and you're not eating really well like those really affect me mm, <laughs> like yeah. not sleeping I mean there's nights where I only sleep five hours and I feel like a zombie mm -hmm. so pulling an all-nighter is hard uh, I think yeah. my biggest thing is that um, there's a really, really good app called the Insight Timer. Speaking of emotions, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, but Insight Timer has a ton of free meditations, and there's one called Empath Meditation. Ooh. It's 12 minutes, I think. Um, and that really, really helps me do an empath meditation. Also, grounding things that are grounding, like putting my feet, like bare feet in the sand or grass. Yeah, so we know grounding. Oh, yes, we learned, that th we learned that this last year. Huh. Yeah, Therapy. yeah. <clears throat> I, you know, like the nervous system resets yeah. are really like a thing. And if you really take the time to pay attention to that and to mm -hmm. give that the love and compassion that it deserves, like, do you find that like you're yes. able to recover pretty quickly? Yes. Yeah. And I get annoyed with myself that I have to do those things. Mm. And then I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have to do all this. No, I disagree. Yeah, You're a human. I know. It's really hard for me. It's <clears throat> yeah. still hard for me. Like, you feel um, like you should be able to just figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, like, my body should just. Well, recover. maybe when you get to your 250th birth, or maybe not. You know, who knows? Maybe it's just. Make it that far. <laughs> oh, let's talk about that. Yeah. What, how, what's the how future? Long can, yeah. How yeah. long can you be a doula, do you think? And if you were to stop, mm. what would be the reason? Mm. How long can I be a doula? Have you been thinking about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I've just had some long, hard births lately. Mm -hmm. And they get <clears> me <throat> thinking, like, maybe I just need to take a break. Yeah. And, and maybe just for the season, too. Like, yeah. my kids are young. I don't want to miss their baseball games, even though I'm like, I have, like, five million baseball games. Mm -hmm. so I'll just, let's one. It's true. Yes. That season never ends. Yeah. You're out. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I just love like baseball. <laughs> You know this. Count the ways. Uh, how, well, uh, I like, don't know. Have you thought about, like, just maybe doing, like, one a, a quarter or something, and that would be enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've thought about that, and I think that I've been, I pair, I've been pairing back this year, mm -hmm. and so I think we'll see how that looks, mm -hmm. you know, how each birth goes, and then I've become, like, really picky on the births I pick. That's nice. And how... How will those go? But then it's like, but then I'm putting those expectations on those births, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And myself, And too, who knows so. how the birth's going to pan out. Right. So really, ultimately, though, if you were to scale back greatly or end it completely, it's purely from, like, a so, emotional and physical taxing Yeah, and, like, self-preservation. Yeah. Yeah. And for the season, too. Yeah. I've been thinking that yeah. come back. Like, it'll always be there. It will. There's a lot of vaginas. There are a lot of vaginas, a lot of babies to be born. It's never going to end. It's never going to end. Um, we had a question come in for you, and she specifically wants to know, because she's interested in doing a VBAC, mm. um, and she wants to know, is there a certain amount of time that she should wait after the birth of her first to yeah. plan for that? So they say that they want a COG, I think, it's the American College of Gynecology. Um, they want you to wait 18 months. Oh, I think that's... From birth to pregnancy or birth to birth? birth to birth. Oh, Which is, you know, say. that's I'm fairly fair. close. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like mine were 22 months apart. And I remember them being a little, like, not excited about that. Yeah. But there's a really, really great, um, like, Facebook group or an, and website called the Feedback Link. I love I all these resources recommend. she's supplying. Yeah. Well, she's a professional. I love it. The Feedback Link has a podcast. 
it's really amazing and they have a lot of um, evidence-based information. There's also another really great website called the Evidence-Based Birth. Oh. Um, so those kind of two things, I think that being educated and you know finding the true evidence of sure there is maybe a higher risk for VBACs, but what is that risk? It's like 0.04% mm -hmm. or something. Um, and and then people can have a VBAC after two cesareans sometime. Wow. So um, I know that, I don't know if this is like helpful to bring up, but in my mind, it's like, if it were me, it would be comforting because my fear was like, well, number one, I wanted to calm, I wanted to be able to control my birth the most that I could, right? So for my second one. Yeah. But the fear was the thing that they say, well, your, your uterus will rupture. Is that what it's yes. called? Yes. Yeah. A uterine rupture. And you recently, you had this happen. I did. <sighs> but it, but, but everyone was fine in the end. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's something like, is there anything that you, any light you can shed on like, look, even, and obviously we're not guaranteeing anything, but like in this specific scenario, it happened. Yeah. And here's the outcome. Wait, what's the question? How was she, like, how did oh. it end up? Like, <clears throat> so she ended up okay. I mean, I guess the worst case scenario of uterine rupture is they have to remove your uterus. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have to in that situation. So I think a couple of things um, happen to, cr to increase the risk of that, which is Pitocin. Um, just stresses your uterus out. It stresses your uterus out on a normal day, <laughs> yeah. not. And um, once you've already had an incision in it, it mm -hmm. can it can thin out. So there's a couple of things that happen. This is like going down a rabbit hole of uterine rupture, which um, which hopefully I don't know if it means like a trigger alert too. But um, if people are pregnant, like please don't listen to this or don't let this stuff scare you because it's so, so low cancer. Right, and I don't, that's why I didn't even know if I should bring it up. But, like, yeah. part of me is, like, yeah. you know, these are the things that we hear and that sure. scare us. And it's, yes. like, it feels like, well, that's that's, hor that's horrible. Yeah. I could never yeah. come back. Right. But what about the stories where it has happened and everyone was okay? Yeah. Right. And I think that's, like, our society is we cling to, like, the worst stories, Your right? Face. They're yeah. the headlines. So this, in this scenario, um, she was okay. She got rushed back to the OR. Um, they were able to sew it back up and can she have another VBAC again? Eh, it would probably not be super likely or they would not want that. But she could she have could another baby. She could probably have another baby. Yeah. Um, but you know, like her uterus could totally host another baby, but, um, it ended up being okay. But with that too comes like trauma. Sure. And so I think again, like in any scenario like we we always tend to focus on the worst case scenarios yeah. and those are the things that probably won't happen to you but something else might happen but how do you heal from those things mm -hmm. i mean you guys know all yeah. our MCAS listeners know they are all about like it's all about therapy mm -hmm. yeah. and healing from things instead of focusing on what terrible things can happen just focus on healing from the things that have already happened yeah, yeah because yeah. you have survived them mm -hmm. yes yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was there another question? Uh, I mean, there were questions just about like, what is doula? What is a doula? What's oh, the doula like, like, like the difference between doula and midwife? Yeah, which we, we talked should, about. Yeah. Well, we yeah. could talk. I mean, we, like we could talk about it a little bit more. I think too, it's just important to mention that um, you know doulas are not medical professionals, and so we really only offer like physical, emotional support. And so, um, but it's a hard balance because I've seen a lot of births. Right, you have a lot of experience, like hands on in. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a lot of like evidence of certain things that it's hard to not say. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to not be like, hey, maybe don't use Pitocin as much yeah. because. Are you allowed to say those things? Um, I can, I can refer people to evidence-based birth and I can say, I'm not a medical professional. So trust your doctors, um, but it's really hard. I'll be honest, like it's a business, mm -hmm. right? Like the medical, mm -hmm. like these doctors are getting paid and and now after COVID, it's been really hard because people are just exhausted mm -hmm. and it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of lovely midwives and even OBs who really care deeply about it, but it's been a rough journey to see the hospital systems here just 
like we churn babies in out. the door, out the door. Yeah. It, like, here we go, here we go. Let's speed yeah. this birth up. Yeah. yeah. Or there's such a big hospital systems that people are wanting to go to the beautiful new hospitals in Malaya. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> um, but they're so bogged down. Like yeah. there's so many freaking people going there. And they can't, they don't have the capacity for it. Do you think that the hospital makes a big difference? Like if you're, you know, yes. you just, it does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is there a way you can research the yeah. hospital? Yeah, I think um, asking doulas too, they're, I think it's okay to ask doulas their opinions on hospitals or evidence on, there is a hospital grade, there's like a grading system mm -hmm. and then percentages of hospitals that like, what's their cesarean rate? Mm. What's their episiotomy rate? Mm -hmm. um, what's a good rate to look for? Like, under uh, what percentage? Because isn't it like they said, like, C-sections are, like, 30% of the time? Yeah, I want to say it's under 25%. Uh, tw under 20. I think the average here is between 19 and 22%, I want to say. Oh, so if it's under that number for the hospital, you have a good chance the staff is very supportive yeah. of, of yeah. not doing Yeah, so that. there's a couple of... That have like the lower rates and and i've personally experienced them the hospitals with lower rates yeah have cesareans interesting yeah yeah so i think that um just and it's really sad too because there's my favorite birth center in san diego was closing this year uh next this month it mm -hmm. is happening it is a for sure happening and i think a lot of it is because um, fund, funding issues and insurance issues mm -hmm. and um, and it sucks because they've been fighting the system for so long and um, the system is money the system is mm -hmm. money like I have a shirt that says build birth centers and not borders and I feel like it's so true like yeah. we spend all of our money on things that we don't need we, we don't, don't need, need. And then, like, the women are suffering because of it or, like, can't have the births they want. Like, I have two clients that are were supposed to deliver at that birth center, and they are running through, so like, just so many issues trying to find, A, a provider that will take them. Mm -hmm. Like, this late in the game. Oh, mm -hmm. you're going to deliver next month. Well, didn't really have a choice because my birth center closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like, all the red tape that they have to go through is mind-blowing. Yeah. And this, and it's probably because oh, somebody wants to make money off yes. of this birth. Yes. And it's like, if they have a certain kind of insurance, they know they're not going to make a lot of money off mm. of it then. I mean, all of this That's to say just podcast. keeps leading me yeah. to um, the importance of doula support and helping you advocate for the hopeful birth that you want or the best birth that you can have within your control. Yeah, and it's hard because I wish that I had more control. Right. Yeah. And, and when you don't know, you don't know. And so, yeah. especially for your first births, I would hope, you know, I would imagine more doulas are needed. Education, I feel like education is power. Yeah. yeah. Right? The more you're educated, the more power you have in a, in a space where, I mean, but at the end of the day, doctors have the trump card. Right. And they can do use the scare tactics of like, they can. Do they can, but yeah. at the end of the day, ladies, it's this your is body, our body. Your choice. Until they force us all to wear red cloaks, it's your choice. Yeah. So vote for Biden. <laughs> Should have said that in right there. So like advocate. I had, you know, I had doctors carry me all of the things about jaundice and how we should do X, Y, Z. And if I declined this special K whatever, or the mm -hmm. eye stuff, mm -hmm. well, this is why you're going to kill your baby. And I had to say, sorry, no, no, sorry, I stand yeah. by. And you know what? They're very well intentioned, maybe. Maybe it's not all about money for everybody, mm -hmm. but they know, only know what they know, too. Yeah. Well, and they have to cover their ass. They have to cover their ass. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of um, our friend Allie's birth when she basically, she almost had her second in the car. It was very, very fast. She came in in a dress. She had the baby. Um, she was still in the dress that so she came in. And the yes. nurse came in after and was like, so we're going to put all of these like pick lines in your whatever, you know, like the yeah. IV yeah. things. And she's like, I already had the baby. <laughs> and they're like, but we always do this when someone comes in to have a baby. She's like, I already had the baby. I, already I don't had need that. <laughs> like, why are you trying to hook me up right. to something? I'm done. Yeah. And so it's just like they follow this, this procedure, mm -hmm. this handbook. 
and you know a lot of the nurses and the people it, you know they're they're just following orders you know right and it's kind of an impossible thing to stand up against I mean even when you're a birth center and you're trying to provide alternative care you still get yeah. pushed out so power in number yeah. get yourself a doula give each other that emotional support advocate together yeah love it um uh, one thing that came up we had quickly before <laughs> close out um we made a joke I made a joke about having your legs spread open mm -hmm. and Carrie <laughs> and I said well you have to have your legs spread wide when you're having a baby this is right up your alley and you gave me some new information <laughs> that I did not know about uh -huh. which is that knees together is the new way knees together ankles out all knees together, ankles yeah, out. It and push, your, it opens your pelvis up in a different way. Mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're still on your back. You're still on your back. Uh, you don't have to be on your back. In fact, being on your side is the best way. And you can still have your legs open a little bit, but your knees still be more together. <laughs> knees? And, this, 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 and knees push together like your you're side. pooping. Push like you're pooping. Push towards the back. Towards how many women boy. poop? How, many, how much poop have you seen? So this, much. Right? So like... Every 38 people every no. single really? one said I'm presenting. yeah I was gonna say I didn't how do you know because I literally Verna would tell me and I didn't uh, smell anything honey I just don't think you should I think so, everybody's protecting you no 100% okay. mm. so I definitely had a hemorrhoid really bubbled out maybe it plugged oh, all the poop so the it. nurses <laughs> are the quickest they, people like, they're just like like you could be pushing and you push a little poop out and they have um, a wipe in their hand and they just like um, wipe it away okay well like I would be shocked five percent of the time. Rick, it Some literally feels like you That's are true. pooping. You are poop, you are how pushing. could you not be pooping? How yeah. could you not poop? Maybe I pooped right before. So, women, pregnant women, the women who have yet to have a child, listening to this, if you like, you will poop, and it's okay. It's great. It's, it's your body doing thing. what it needs to do. And Werner yeah. wants to watch it as your partner. He wants to see the poop. <laughs> no, he loves that's his it. favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also, get it out of the way now because pooping after childbirth is not fun. Oh, gosh. gosh. Yeah, <laughs> empty out yourself because you got a solid 10 days before your body's going to do that. I had again. a traumatic birth and nothing was as traumatic as the, the constipation. After, yeah, the Ugh. first poop. Nothing. I don't think anything's more painful than that. No, truly. Um, whew, mine wasn't painful doing the poop, but it was so uncomfortable every day that goes by that I'm not pooping. And I'm just like, I just like that mental, I just need to clear out. I'm so. Well, all of it. Yeah. All of it. No, all of it. Um, okay. The pooping. And then, um, what else like is something that women, that you would recommend that women do d before birth mm -hmm. that like you had seen maybe success with, or like, just like a really good piece of advice for women mm -hmm. who are about to have a baby. Um, I think that like intentional movement besides just sitting like in a chair or a desk, like I feel like a desk sitting is the worst for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, I just walked two miles every day. I think just intentional movement, whether it's like being on your hands and knees, like doing cat cow a couple times a day or swimming for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. like think and different things that are kind of just moving your body and your pelvis in different ways. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Wish I'd known that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I sat at a um, desk. Sorry, I just sat, sat and blogged. We didn't ask our uncensored question. Oh, yeah, wasn't there a... Yeah, yeah, right. so, so um, every week we do an uncast and... Can I say anonymous? Yeah, I don't know if I love that. How do we feel like about things, I like Carrie? It. <laughs> anonymous. Anonymous. Say that three times fast. Anonymous. 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 It sounds like hippopotamus. Oh, which I love. A hippo. Who doesn't love a hippo? Hippo. But we have an anonymous question that comes in from one of our listeners. We do, and we love, love to it. hear from you. It gives us a chance we can all answer it. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of a fun outside perspective, and I love that. And the question is, and I feel like this is right up your alley. Ooh. How do you manage the complexity of in-law relationships? Splitting holidays, perhaps wanting to spend more time with your parents versus your in-laws. Do, do you maintain an individual relationship with your in-laws? For example, do you call them or text them without your spouse? Or does your ha spouse handle communication with mm. your parents or her parents? Mm. Well, um... 
Werner's mom and I, I'd say, are close, closer than the average in-law, where even when we were dating, we would be texting or we'd talk on the phone. Is that like her, just her personality? Or you guys like just get along well? Yeah, I think, well, A, her personality, and I think we get along well. We lived in the same city a lot, so we saw each other a lot when we were living in San Francisco. Um, so to this day, you know, we'll text each other or message when we plan get together, like when she's going to visit her and I will talk. Um, but Werner's dad, it's always like, Hey, how's your dad doing? And Werner will be the one to reach out or plan a visit. It's always like communication through Werner. Mm. Yeah. And then when it comes to my parents, I'm pretty sure it's just always been me. Werner is a texting hoon. <laughs> I'm barely a texting hoon, really. Um, but I am curious and why I think this is a great question for Carrie, because you guys make an effort to go see your in-laws a lot yeah. in New York. Yeah. And I've also seen friends where like when there's a new baby, it's like those parents want to visit, but then the other spouse's parents want to visit. And how do you like balance who gets to the time? And I've seen like mm -hmm. the grandmas kind of have tension because they both want to be involved and feelings get hurt. And mm -hmm. I've just never had, the, never we, had don't, we don't all live in the same area. So it's not really tension. Or spend time like they don't. Yeah, it's like I see my mom all the time because she lives here. So it's like if we go visit Vegas to see his parents, it, there's no. Do you ever, would you ever like go to Vegas for a holiday and then miss the holiday here? I think we've done that for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And it, and as you know, it's like, well, we're going to do Christmas, Christmas here and then we'll do Thanksgiving yeah, there. Taking turns. Yeah. My, yeah, so it's an interesting uh, my husband goes back well he was always going back every July and Chris and Christmas and this was a big thing when we first started dating because um, my parents were always super flexible like we would celebrate Christmas Kevin will always say like wow they celebrated like our first Christmas married or together um, my family celebrated Christmas on December 22nd and then we flew back to New York and he was always like wow what and his family is very traditional and they're like oh, we cannot like i mean even like come out for thanksgiving the biggest they've done is easter they've come out for easter because they don't really celebrate not a holiday <laughs> no. <laughs> right. uh so but they cannot leave their house on thanksgiving is this like is this because extra people come or even if it yeah. were just them i think even if it were just them mm -hmm. but people so his parents house is the hub for every event which i'm like it's exhausting oh yeah God hosting it yeah and, and they would be I'm offended if like one year you're like you know we're just gonna have christmas here i don't know that they would be offended and we have done christmas here but we've flown out like the 27th mm -hmm. and so we've celebrated it later with them but they still do their christmas day with you know whoever comes yeah. to their house um i think it's been great because my family is very flexible and so they have been cool with it, yeah. whether or not, I mean, they're also like very non-confrontational people. So I mean, we, we never wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and Kevin, and so I think too, it's nice that our, like our parents get along really well. Like they've gone on a trip to Italy together. Yeah. Just them without yeah. us. Yeah. Like we weren't specifically not invited. You guys are not invited. Mm -hmm. um, and then this past summer, my parents were out there in July for the big family reunion, which they've been invited to every year. And let so, me just say that that family reunion is very fun. I was able to participate fun. one year, and the I've never seen a better fireworks show in Ooh. my life. So good. Yeah. The best. Yeah, so it's worth it. It's worth I it. I love going in July. Beautiful. December is getting a little... Cold. <sighs> it's getting... Yes. And long, you're there for a while, a good, yeah. a good while. It's a long time. It's a long flight. Like, there's no direct flights mm -hmm. to upstate New York, mm -hmm. uh, even from L.A., if we had that, you know, yeah. we did that. So it's a, like a 10-hour ten, ten trip. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Um, and, and it's expensive. Yeah, time change. We could go to Hawaii. Yeah, that's, so my friends, we could literally go. I have some friends where they have that tension of like, well, are you going to be at our house for Christmas? And then the other parents would be like, well, aren't you going to come to our house? And they just felt really split. So they're like, 
we are forever just making the stance that at Christmas time, we're just taking a trip with our family. Yeah. I kind of love that. That's a nice way to avoid it. Great. Maybe one day. Um, and you haven't seen, like, this family union that they've been doing for so many years. It hasn't dwindled at all? I feel like it kind of ebbs and flows as far as people, like, a couple years, people, like, a couple years after we started having kids, people had more kids. And then when they have, like, the little, little kids... Um, people weren't coming and then I feel like last year was like an influx of oh. more people um but yeah I mean then there's kind of like the older generation is mm. dying off right, right. no I know I mean it's happening in my family and we used to go camping lots of us and now we kind of just we don't really do it mm -hmm. anymore because when the older generation dies off there has to be someone in that younger Carrying generation who carries it on and mm -hmm. it is a big job especially when Everyone's used to, like, not planning it. Everyone's used to just being, like, told what Show to do. Up. Yeah. yeah. And now you have to, like, think ahead, and you have to invite everybody, and you have to coordinate. And, like, that's not a personality of everyone. No. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's definitely Kevin's parents' role. I, role. And I don't, like, basically his mom has become the matriarch of that extended family. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't see it dwindling anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, yeah. Which is awesome, like, so awesome. Yes. And it's a really good hub for everyone to come back to. Um, but there's a lot more people now that don't live there. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot more Californians and, you know, yeah. some... So Michigan. what was the question specifically? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we well, helping at all? Like, I, well, um, I think one of the interesting parts of the question was, um, like, I think the balancing of holidays. So we've mm -hmm. kind of talked mm -hmm. about how maybe you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're switching off, you're going to... If you have a flexible one Michelle's set of parents, to read it. <laughs> oh, sorry. If you have one set of parents who are flexible, you know that obviously makes it so yeah. easy. And similarly, on my side, like my family, we because we have so many in laws on my cousin. You know, we all have in laws, right? Yeah. So as we get older and have babies and get married, um, a really nice solution for us was just to have holidays a week before. Yeah. So if I want to see all of my mother's cousins and, you know, my cousins, but like her side of the family, they all know we're going to host Christmas the week before actual Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that's when we all get together. We're going to host Thanksgiving the weekend before, the Saturday before. And it's such a nice way to allow people to go with their in-laws for their spouses because that's important to them as well. Just as this is important to, to you, whatever mm -hmm. your family is, um, I think that's a really good solution. It has been for us anyway. And as far as texting goes, so like one of the question, one part of the question was, do you text without your spouse or does your spouse handle all the communication? Um, we have group texts in my, and it's like my whole family, Brian is on that one. And you know, my sister's husband is on there. My brother's wife is on there. And then Brian's side is the same deal. I'm on it with his family. But what inevitably happens, and like sometimes, like those are for like a picture of the kids or like the weather, like very kind of like general announcements, safe kind of communication. There's always sidebars. Like that's just like a hub if we all really need to know about something. Like Brian's dad will send like a picture of the first snow in Vermont, you know, and I don't even know, I don't have to look at the text. I know if his dad sent me a text, it's weather related. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it, you know, which is, which is fine. But there are always these side texts that I'll have. Um, you know, with his sisters. Like, are you ever texting Brian's dad? Um, I only text Brian's dad by myself if I have, like, something about his birthday or something. Yeah. About, you know, something that Brian can't know. But otherwise, even if I'm thanking him for, like, a Christmas present, I'm texting his dad and Brian. Yeah. It's, like, all three of us on the text. Like, I don't think I really need yeah. to be texting his That's dad. That's why I think it's, like, it's really just, like, a personality relationship thing. Like, if yeah. you're jiving with your in-laws and you see them you know and have this relationship that it feels natural to do that great and if not that's also very normal yeah like there's no pressure to have to like be Best especially friends. close no. with your in-laws i don't think if no. it happens great if not like just be polite and, and don't worry about it yeah all great. right we are at the seg part of the segment where we talk about things we're loving this have week. you heard of it things we're loving i think i've heard of this what are you loving? Is there anything you're loving? Uh, so I tried a new dry shampoo that I really love. Oh, we love that. Always one. open to new dry shampoo. Amika, A M I K A. Amika. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little on the pricey end, but you know what? 
I deserve it. You do. You, you do. deserve it. When I decide I don't want to take a shower, I want to spend $30 on a good dry shampoo. Does it smell it is, good? It smells so good. And yeah. think about the water bill you're saving <laughs> yes. for just a couple spits. Kevin will love that. Yes. See? Yeah. See? And balance Amiga. 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 And is it any kind of like flavor? It's like that is their, their brand. That's mm. all they have. Um, I think there's only one. It's a very bright bottle, and I think it's called like Perk Me Up or something. Bright, like yellow, like Pink. all different colors. Oh, colorful! Colorful, all right, I love yeah. it mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Amazon. But then my hairdresser, I went to do, get my hair done last week, and she was selling it there. And I was like, oh, sorry, I just found it on Amazon. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Should my hair done? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Amika dry shampoo. Okay. Love it. Thank you. Michelle, what are you like? What are you like? What are you like? <laughs> <laughs> you first. You go first. <laughs> oh, actually, I know. Okay. Which I think we need to talk about more next episode. <laughs> okay. But um, also, I realized that we literally said in our last episode, next week, we we're going to talk about friends. how to make friends as Shit, an adult. Sorry, guys. That's just going to have to week. push out. You guys just come um, We had a surprise guest. No, but Vicky recommended a show called Heartstopper, and it's on no. Netflix. It's on Netflix. Oh. It's the best. Have you seen it? No. Two seasons. I love it. Is it sad? No, no. it's like super no. sweet. Like these high schoolers. Um, it's maybe the, one of the sweetest shows I've ever seen. Yeah, like the boy is, there's one boy who's, you know, openly gay, and he makes friends with another boy who is, for all sense and purposes, a straight boy all his life. And it just kind of shows their relationship evolving and them becoming really good friends. And you'll just have to watch <sighs> to see. And then also, Charlie, the main character, his friend group is very um, diverse. And they just, they show like all different kinds of teens. They're all in high school. And it's mm -hmm. just, and it's, it's a British show. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, it's lovely. It's really great. Yeah. I, it's one of those binge while walk, folding your laundry mm -hmm. type of shows. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. What are you loving, Victoria? Oh, Victoria She's digging deep. deep. Dig deep. I know, you know, and I am digging deep because I remember multiple times this week being like, this. remember this. You're loving this, this it. right now. Remember <laughs> this. Here I am this recording is, and it is very on brand It's for you. so on brand. <laughs> It's like, you know what it is? I just live in the moment so much, you guys, that I don't, I, the yeah. past is the past. I can't I recall. It. I it. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, um, oh, you know, okay, this actually, I genuinely am loving this, okay? So, I had these leggings that I, I, I have three pairs, but one has a paint stain on the mm. leg, so I just kind of don't really love to wear yeah. them out anymore. Anyway, and they are from Amazon, okay? They're like, they the brand was like Core or something about these years ago. And the thing I love about them, on top of them fitting well and having like cute little details, they have pockets on the side mm. for my phone so I can walk and just love it in my, my thigh. And I didn't have a pair of black ones. And I needed like a black pair with a pocket. What was I thinking? Mm -hmm. So I went back on Amazon to buy a cheap pair. And the brand that I wanted, that I thought I was going to just get a similar pair, it didn't exist anymore. It's gone. It's been absolved, mm -hmm. folded into another factory brand on Amazon. And so I found another pair. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, this has good reviews. I'm going to get it. And I freaking love them. Ooh. I love them so much that I have a hard time not wearing them. Like every time I grab them, my leggings. You know how you have like those leggings that you're mm -hmm. like, well, I need to wash them because I need these to ones. Use those? These ones. These are mine, but how much is yours? Because they, they were ninety nine dollars. They were on Amazon. I think they were twenty five dollars. Okay, I need to try those. They fit perfectly. I got a size medium. I will confirm that for sure on when I list it on the website, but I'm pretty sure. And yeah, they just they're lovely. All right, yeah. check the show notes. She'll link them. Yeah, yeah they're great. Highly recommend. Love it. Yeah. I found it. I figured you it out. You did it. I did it. Thank you for being here, Carrie. Thank, Thank you. you so much. This was fun. I love talking So much fun. I'm excited. I, I really love hearing, hearing about it. it. Yeah. Always. We're if you guys have any other questions about doula life, um, send them in and Carrie will we'll send them to her. Just go ahead and go to doulacarrie.com and oh, yeah, direct just... your questions there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's better. Also, what's your Instagram? Uh, doula Carrie Vasali. And can you spell Vasali? V I S A L L I. We'll also put that in the show notes. Yes. So if you mm -hmm. are local to San Diego, get her before she leaves. Get her before she get her while she's hot. I know. Or I have a lot of good referrals. Yeah. Yes. Amazing Julie's. 
She's picky. So if you actually make the cut and become a client of hers, oh my yeah. gosh, you're special. <laughs> wealth of knowledge, though, either yeah. way. And a wonderfully kind, empathetic, beautiful yeah. person. We love you. Thank you. Love you, ladies. Yay. Bye. Bye. Bye.